Well, all right, it's Joe Lim. Looks like I'm still here. And I really do appreciate the encouraging words of support and feedback from my, from my followers about my last video and just the video series in general. So with that, I'm gonna keep doing maybe a few more. I really do hope these are informing people and even helping others in similar situation. So that said, April is Autism Awareness Month. And so for this month, I'll be doing a video blitz. Now don't worry, it doesn't mean that I'm gonna be posting several new videos a day. Kudos to those who can actually do that, but I'll be doing maybe one per week through the month of April. To me, that's a blitz. And I'm gonna start off in this video with something simple. I'm gonna be sharing with you some inspirational and informational quotes and sayings that we can relate to in terms of their words. These are, these have essentially characterized our lives as a family with, with a child with special needs. Now, I can always point to my faith for some scripture and passages to help me accomplish this, but I'm not gonna do that for this video. But even without that particular aspect, we can still find some very inspirational and encouraging and positive sayings and words out there that we can grab onto and hold onto for, for guidance and strength during some of life's most difficult challenges. So I'm gonna share with you some of those today. This first set of quotes and sayings are for the advocates. You know, the parents, the loved ones, the families, you know, the advocates. So let me start off with this. If you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Again, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Friends, as parents, you need to be speaking up for your children, especially when they cannot speak effectively for themselves. And you can certainly have advocates from other areas. You can even have lawyers. You can have parent support groups, and that's all wonderful. But as the parents, you're at the front lines. You need to be doing the research and getting educated. You need to keep up with the policies and the laws. You need to be ready with questions and answers at IEP meetings. You know, the system can eat you up alive. Um, they, can, they can take advantage of you in the sense that your child may not get all the benefits and services entitled to him unless, unless you are at the table fighting for him and speaking up for them. So once again, if you're not at the table, you're on the menu. Here's another one. An ounce of prevention equals a pound of cure. It's a pretty popular one. I grew up learning it and it can be interpreted different ways in terms of health and safety and many other aspects as well. For example, my son Jordan, his blood sugar level sometimes rises to very dangerous um, readings. And quite often these occur at school. A large majority of the time they actually occur at school. And so when we would ask about it, the response would be usually something like, well, we can't really control what he's feeling. You know, if it happens, we'll address it, we'll fix it, but we can't control what's inside of him. Now, I don't really completely agree with that because if you can determine the antecedents, then you can address them before they occur again. I mean, it's great to be reactive and we should always know how to react to something, but it's also important to be proactive. So once again, an ounce of prevention equals a pound of cure. Here's another one in this category, very simply, trust your gut, trust your instincts. A longer version of it goes like this. Never apologize for using your intuition. Your brain can play tricks, your heart can blind, but your gut is usually right. You know, parents, in the course of advocating for your children over the years, you've got to come across many experts in different fields, the medical field, the nursing field, the education industry, and you know, kudos to them. I mean, they're experts for a reason. They've put in the time and the hours to gain that distinction and certainly take their suggestions seriously. But as parents, you don't need a special degree or license or diploma to prove that you know what's best for your child. You have the most invested in their care and well-being. You have the emotional, the physical, the mental, the financial, and the spiritual investment more than anyone else. So if there is a difference of opinion, even with the experts, go with your instincts. All right, this next set of quotes and sayings has to do with autism. This first one is a pretty well-known one. I am different, not less. This comes to us from Temple Grandin, the well-known author and uh, professor. She herself is in the spectrum, so a very inspiring individual. Uh, a similar quotation comes from Stuart Duncan. He said, 
Autism is not a disability, it is a different ability. I need not tell you, friends, that all of us as human beings are different. Just look around, we are all different. Every one of us is unique. We have our own likes and dislikes, our own strengths and weaknesses. And therefore, to claim that somebody is less just because of a disability is not only inconsiderate, but it is just plain wrong. And while we do need to take importance to those with certain instrumental values, um, we must never lose sight of the fact that in terms of our intrinsic value as human beings, we are all equal. So we are all unique. We may be different, but nobody is less. Here's another quotation. Autism is not the tragedy. Ignorance is the tragedy. And that can go for any special condition, actually. Uh, a similar quote is a little bit longer. It goes like this. I thought I would have to teach my child about the world. Turns out, I had to teach the world about my child. They see someone who cannot talk. I see a miracle who doesn't need words. You know, friends, I remember when Jordan was just four years old, he was diagnosed with autism, and I felt so bad for him because for so many years, he was misjudged. A lot of people thought that his outbursts and his tantrums were because he was a spoiled brat or just an aggressive kid, but it turned out it was because of his condition and he was just misunderstood. And even today, years and years later, he is still misunderstood by those who just don't know. And that's why I do these videos. That's why I wrote my book here, to hopefully share with the world our story to get people to understand, not just Jordan, but people just like him and their families. Hopefully it's working. Here's one more in this category. Uh, this comes from Carrie Magro, who is a speaker and author, a motivational speaker. He said, autism doesn't come with an instruction guide. It comes with a family who will never give up. Absolutely true. You know, friends, in, over the years, I've had the honor and privilege of meeting other families with kids of special needs themselves. And certainly, the specifics of our battles are different. But we all share a lot of commonalities as well in our general characteristics. And one of those is the unrelenting motivation and drive to do what's best for our children. The resolve to never give up and never lose hope for them, no matter how difficult the challenge may be. Uh, we look upon the words of Martin Luther King Jr. himself, who said, We must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. That's from Martin Luther King. We must accept finite disappointment, but never lose infinite hope. And as parents of special needs children, we will never give up on our child. These last set of sayings is about diabetes, which is Jordan's second uh, special needs condition. Here's one that comes from a mom of a type 1 diabetic. Uh, her name is Linda Hemp, but this is what she says. You can do the same thing twice and diabetes won't do the same thing both times. That is absolutely true. You know, as a mathematician, as an engineer, I've tried to develop a formula for how much insulin to give my son Jordan depending on what time of day it is and depending on these specific circumstances. And I can run the same trial multiple times with everything being held equal and get completely different results each time. It really is that unpredictable. But you know, as his parents, we've noticed some, some patterns and we, so therefore we, we have some guidelines in what to do and as a result, we've been able to manage his condition pretty well, even though there isn't a, an exact formula, but it is quite challenging still. Here's another one related to diabetes. It's a pretty good one too. Life is not about waiting for a storm to pass, but learning to dance in the rain. You know, when I, when I first read about that, even though it doesn't say the word diabetes, it just it makes me think of diabetes. Because, you know, as, as much as we hope and pray, and we will continue to hope and pray that there will be a biological cure one day, as it stands, today there still isn't one. And so, in a sense, this storm is not passing yet. But despite that, I, I know many diabetics, type 1 and type 2, who have an incredibly positive disposition a peaceful disposition about life. They, they have a very joyous and happy personality. And they are really just an inspiration to those around them. So even though the storm hasn't passed, in a sense, they have learned to dance in the rain and they are amazing individuals. Let me give you one more today. It'll be my last one, but I think it's a good one. If you don't believe superheroes are real, I'll show you a type one diabetic. 
And that is true. Uh, you know, this, by the way, is by Robin Arson, who is a street athlete, but also a, someone with type 1 diabetes. You know, friends, when I look at my son and all he has to go through every day, I mean, aside from his autism, just the pain that he must feel with his finger pricks and whenever we change the insulin pump. And yet for him to be such a happy kid, to remain such, with, with such a joyful disposition, it's just, it's just humbling and it's quite amazing. You know, if you look up the words real trooper in the dictionary, you'll see his picture there, so to speak. You know, I'm reminded that the many times I've complained in my life, just because I didn't get what I want. The many times I've whined just because I couldn't accomplish a particular goal or, or do what I needed to do, all that pales in comparison to the difficulties and the challenges that my son goes through every day. And yeah, it may be true that he needs me and others for his survival, for his total care. I get that. He needs us. But you know what? In a very real sense, I need him too. I need him to provide me one of the most important reasons I have in my life. I need him more than he needs me. He is way more important to me than I am to him. And I can tell you that he has inspired me more than I can ever inspire him. He is my hero. He is truly a superhero in my book, as are all these wonderful, special individuals. Give him props every time you see them. You know, friends, I just spent the last several minutes trying to figure out the best way to end this video. And, you know, I, I don't want to do anything fancy. Let me just say thank you once again for your support and just for your encouragement. And, you know, as long as, um, you know, these are helping people, I guess I'll keep doing it. I'll play it by ear every single month. But um, I hope you're enjoying these. I hope you're learning from them. Have a good one. This is Joe Lim.